Recently, members of the women's national basketball team and Afro Basket women's champions, the Tigress, protested the non-payment of their bonuses and allowances by the Nigerian Basketball Federation, the MBBF. They were particularly aggrieved over what they described as the unfair treatment meted out to them by the Nigerian government and the MBBF after their victory at the 2021 FIBA Afro Basket Women's Championship in Cameroon. Some members of the team who posted a video on Twitter to express their grievances said their efforts in winning the championship for a fifth time were never appreciated. The viral video elicited numerous reactions from many Nigerians who were concerned that the Tigers had been treated so shabbily by the government and the MBBF. It also prompted the House of Representatives Committee on Sports to launch a probe into funding and leadership crisis in the Basketball Federation, as well as the non-payment of bonuses and allowances to members of the Women's National Basketball Team. Allegations of misappropriation of funds and unfair treatment of Nigerian athletes at the just-concluded Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games led to this inquiry by the House Committee on Sports. At the inquiry, former executives of the Nigeria Basketball Federation were interrogated on a petition written on behalf of the female national basketball team. Investigations reveal that despite denial, the MBBF currently owed the female basketball team some unpaid allowances and bonuses. Secretary General, do you owe the players $59,000 in allowances or not? I know government is continuing, sir. It's a simple question. Do you owe the players in or not with nine thousand dollars plus in allowance or not? Yes, the players are being owed, sir. Okay, so now what that means is that the Tigers, they had three issues. We discussed about them not seeing the president. We iron that out. We say you don't have the powers. We discussed about the two hundred thirty thousand dollars that is one fourteen thousand dollars for the um, female and one sixteen thousand dollars for the male. You have said that has been resolved. Yes. Now, what we are on is $59,000. You owe the Tigress $59,000. You need to find a way to pay the Tigress their $59,000. Do you understand me clearly? The committee also discovered that the MBBF, under the leadership of its former president, Musa Kida, also owes support staff and technical officers. Having come to the conclusion that the MBBF Oh, the Tigress, the sum of $59,000. I want to move that by all means they should find a way to offset this pain and pay the people that deserve to be paid. I so move. By MBBA, and we're giving four weeks to offset this pain. Four weeks. The Deep Tigers had publicly called out the former president, Musa Kida, for abandoning the team ahead of their Afro Basket Championship, with the team eventually won. The MBBF is without an executive board as it is yet to hold its elections after the expiration of its executive tenure due to internal wranglings. The Ministry of Youth and Sports temporarily administers the game in the country. Now, joining us in the studio to discuss the committee's findings is Honorable Olumide Oshoba, Chairman, House Committee on Sports. Welcome to the show, Honorable Oshoba, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for well, having me. Yes. Well, the uh, story of the Tigress was a big embarrassment to everyone. Uh, the Ministry of Youth uh, and Sports uh, Development uh, tried to respond, and then your committee took up the matter. We would like to share with us your major findings and what you think, what your committee was able to come up with in terms of what is responsible for this recurrent case of failure to pay bonuses and allowances and officials, you know, sitting on kids meant for athletes or, you know, uh, misappropriating something even as, you know, small as phones. Well, let me, first of all, take up the three main points that were in that viral video. The Tigress, they accused um, the MBBF of not making provision for them to have the golden handshake. That was one. Secondly, they said they were owed um, bonuses. And lastly, they talked about the adopt a team funds. Now, I'll start with the 
golden handshake. Um, the president of MBBF, the former president, um, was with us, and he clearly said that it was not in his hands that he had to do with the presidency, giving the girls the opportunity to come for the golden handshake. And we understood that. On the $230,000, it's actually owed both teams, the men's team and the female team. The problem that we had was that the CBN requested for all the 24 names, and they wanted to pay all 24 players, both men and female. But the male team refused to make their accounts available. That's what slowed down the payments. And then the female team finally made their accounts available and they have been paid now. But let me clear something here. The initiative was adopt an athlete or adopt a team, initiated by the Minister of Youth and Sports. And I'm sure Nigerians know that no athlete has come out to say they had problems with the funds for the adopt an athlete. So all the athletes that were adopted were paid their funds. But because of the fact that some players refused to uh, make their account details available was what slowed down the payment. But we have resolved the um, female payments now. But unfortunately, the male team have still not made their account details available and they've still not been paid. Sorry, clarification. When you say you have resolved the issue of payment to the uh, female team, does it mean the money has moved from the central bank to their individual accounts? Yes, the female team players have been paid. Right. So I'm going to pick up a topic that Dr. Abati has been talking about, the anti-doping lab that has just finally been opened in, in Suka, the 350 million naira lab. And um, my question for you is, what did the sports committee of the House of Reps, your investigative hearing or investigative committee, what did you discover as a result of the embarrassing disqualification of several Nigerian athletes from the Tokyo Olympics due to doping? Because I know that there was some action taken on that. Can you give us an update? Well, um, it was similar to what happened in the US 9-11. We had um, the Athletics Federation of Nigeria. We had the National Organizing Committee. We had the National Anti-Doping Committee as well. And then we had the Ministry. All these agencies were meant to work together to make sure that didn't happen. Unfortunately, they were all working across purposes, and that is what caused all the problem. And to make matters worse, we had the Athletic Federation of Nigeria president and his team that were not releasing information to the ministry because there was a problem with the um, board then and the ministry. So I'd like to ask, did the girls have to wait that long and do a video before they can get paid? Well, it's rather unfortunate. The funds were meant for Olympic preparations. And I was there when that um, adopt, an athlete adopted team was launched. And I know all the athletes that were adopted individually were given their funds directly into their accounts and they used that for their preparations. It's unfortunate it was because the team, the players, they did not make their account details available at the time when they would have been able to get those funds. That was the main problem we had. But at some point, I told them that could the um, CBN had basically used traveler's checks or something to get these funds to them. They said no, that those funds were actually banks that donated those funds. There were three banks that donated those funds. I think um, Guarantee Trust Bank, Zenith, and Access. So these were funds donated by banks for our um, basketball teams. So it had to be that long before they get it because we had to wait for the male basketball team. And the way the girls painted it wasn't that way. They felt neglected. In fact, they enunciated the fact that most of them were not cared for in the events they went for. And they threatened not to represent Nigeria again if those monies were not paid. So well, uh, it was a national embarrassment. Yeah, it was a national embarrassment. I agree with you on that. But the thing is this, um, funds that were meant for the Olympics preparation, it was $230,000, $114,000 for the female, and $116,000 for the male. Um, those funds, 
couldn't have been paid when they were meant to be paid because the CBN insisted on having all the accounts. That was when the problem really started. They wanted to pay all 24 players at the same time. Um, maybe you could invite the CBN to explain why they have to pay all 24 players at the same time. Well, it raises a question perhaps of uh, bias, of discrimination. If the male uh, athletes were not willing to supply their bank accounts and the female athletes were ready, uh, they shouldn't have made uh, the payment of the uh, female athletes dependent on the preference, choice, decision of the male athletes. But that's not my question. It's about funding. Uh, about three days ago, uh, Sunday Dari, the Minister of Sports, appeared before your committee. And one of the issues that you raised was about funding of uh, sports and the challenges faced in that sector. Uh, so, I mean, what was the uh, nature of the deliberation? Was the uh, disposition of your committee in this regard? Although we understand that in the National Development Plan, for the first time, sports and youth development has suddenly been included in the National Development Plan and offered a seat at the table. And government is pledging under that 10-year National Development Plan, uh, 2021 to 2025 National Development Plan, up to about 140 billion naira uh, to support uh, sports. Which uh, again raises this question. Why is it that, yes, we all love sports, but nobody wants to fund it? And why is it that the National Assembly uh, is not strong on advocacy for better funding for sports? Well, I've always preached that um, sports is a business. We need um, private sector participation in sports. Um, the federations um, were under the National Sports Commission previously. And what we have now is um, the ministry is handling all the federations. As I said earlier on in an interview, we've had four permanent secretaries in the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports. What that means is that uh, the permanent secretary right now is more or less the person that's taking the duties of National Sports Commission. So if you keep changing the permanent secretary every six months, you don't have stability in that ministry. That's one of the problems we've had in um, that ministry and our committee has been talking about. Well, I want to change tack now, but before I do, I just have to say that to your comment, I completely agree with that. If it was the female team members that supplied their account details, or sorry, the other way, if the males had supplied their account details and the women had not, we all know how that would probably have worked out. But I want to change tack now. For the last couple of weeks, um, the National Assembly, you've been really engaging the MDAs on the 2022 budget, ministries, um, departments and agencies. So I want to, you know, what's your overview? Give us your overview on that process so far and on the issue of budget implementation. I know the National Assembly you, gives you, the House of Reps and the Senate, you have guidelines on how to, you know, engage on these issues. When you have MDAs that are selective in implementing their budgets, how do you approach that? Well, uh, my committee, uh, we read the Riot Act to them. Basically, we have the first tranche released um, sometime in April or May, and then the second tranche for the capital um, implementation is usually released in July. Then maybe the third tranche released August, September, October, thereabouts. And percentages are released. And we've um, told our ministries, departments, and agencies that once you get the second tranche, you need to start the procurement process. What happens is most ministries, departments, and agencies start um, awarding of the procurement process starts in October. So you don't get um, companies or people getting their award letters till late October or early November. We, National Assembly, we've done our bit. We've um, changed the budget circle to a January-December circle, but then the other um, arm that should actually implement what we've done, the executive, are waiting till November to start um, the procurement process and implementation of the capital. So it's like we've done our work. It's left to them to do theirs. All right, so please, let's just dial back a bit. Ife Bekwe, one of the girls from the Tigris, said, we are owed $73,118 by the MBBF, $24,000 by the Ministry for the Tokyo Grant, and $100,000 donation from three banks in Nigeria. This is close to $200,000. How much were they being paid? The girls have been paid now. We just wanted to reconcile the figure because they listed out the figures when they were here the last time. Well, um, the girls were owed $114,000 um, with the adopt and a team 
um, funds, they have been paid those funds. Unfortunately, those girls have not, um, they, for about 48 hours, they refused to acknowledge payment. I got people to call them continuously, telling them to confirm they've been paid, and they refused to um, confirm payment until probably three days after, which I find very unfortunate. They came out with a viral video. It was very embarrassing to Nigeria. And when they got paid, I expected immediately they would have said, oh, we've been paid $9,500 each for the adopted team, which they didn't do until. So, so, so let's get it right. Is it only the adopted team money they've been paid? That's about $100,000 like they listed 114000 So what about the 73118 in allowances and bonus and 24000 from the Ministry Tokyo Grants? Well, what we were investigating was the $114,000 and the $73,000 allegation that they were owed. Yes. And um, in the video you just showed, we broke it down. We got the, um, the team manager, the former team manager, wrote a petition. And we requested for that petition to see the breakdown. And we realized that the girls' um, part in that some $3,000 was $59,000. That was the ruling we made that the $59,000 should be paid in four weeks. With the 24,000 ministry um, Tokyo grant, I don't know anything about that one. So that one has not been paid. So you said you paid 59,000. No, no, you no. Know, 59,000 was ruled. Was that ruled. Has that one been paid? We gave them four weeks to pay that 59,000. So they've not paid that 59,000? They've not paid that 59,000. So they've only paid 114,000? Yes, they have paid them 114,000. So that means they're still owing them 59,000, like you said, and the $24,000 the ministry grant that you say you know nothing about? I don't know anything about the $24,000 ministry So grant. is it safe to say they've not been paid fully? Well, they've not been paid the $59,000 about the 24000 grant. I didn't know so about So they've not that. been paid fully? Because no, but the point is, the, the $24,000 grant, they did not mention the $24,000 grant in that viral video. No, they did, because this is the evidence here. It's on the video. In fact, what they stated here was $73,118 in allowance and bonus, $24,000 ministry Tokyo grant, $100,000 donated to them by three branks, president and presidential reception. That's what they mentioned in the viral video. Well, the $114,000 has been paid. The $59,000, which is part of the $73,000, is what we ruled that should be paid in less than four weeks. Okay, let's move on. I mean, that much is already clear. Uh, you said it about three times, so it's clear. Now, very quickly, there is an obsession with football. It's good that the House Committee is looking at uh, basketball, but, you know, is your committee looking at seeing other sports develop in Nigeria and what can be done? Because all of us, because uh, we love football, it's always about football, football. If there was no issue with the uh, Tigress, uh, many Nigerians probably do not even know much about basketball. And at the time that the uh, federal government is talking about national development plan and sports is included, and there is a threat to make big money available in uh, 2022, uh, what's your committee doing to make sure that there isn't just this uh, you know, focus on football for the most part? Well, um, everywhere in the world, when you talk about football, you talk about grassroots development. It starts from the grassroots, the younger ones. You need um, infrastructure in all the local governments and states for you to actually grow football. Uh, it can't be done primarily by the federal government. You need state governments to get involved. You need the local governments to get involved. You need pitches, training pitches for the young ones to grow. So it's a very, very massive infrastructural development plan that should be put in place to develop football the way we want it developed. And what's been done about that? And, well, in I, your, and also, well, two questions. In your oversight capacity, what are the real gaping holes that you see in sports development in Nigeria, given that, you know, we all talk about our over-dependence on oil, for example, and how sports is massively underutilized? Well, now that the um, federal government has um, given the go ahead for an 80 billion fund, I expect that fund will be used to develop the grassroots um, football um, infrastructure we're thinking about. Well, unfortunately, um, we, we're talking about over 40 federations, so that fund is going to be used for a lot of federations. So football will get a chunk, but hopefully it will be enough to kickstart the infrastructural development I'm talking about. I just want to ask, did your committee by any chance look into the back and forth with the Athletic Federation leading up to the Olympics where the athletes needed kits? in 
the Olympic venue in Tokyo and the kids were here and some people said they were not going to wear the kids. And it even led to another viral video of a Nigerian short put athlete that was to represent the country, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the following day, washing his own kit overnight. While they said there was a supply of abundance of Puma kit here. Did you guys by any chance look into that? And also the case of sponsors' phone given to athletes and they said some people took it from them before they gave it back to them in the end. Did you guys look into that, please? Yeah, we did. And... Um the athletes came out and said it was very untrue about the phones. That has already been resolved. It was just, um, let us get something clear. I think during the Olympics, there were some um, characters that were trying to embarrass Nigeria. The gentleman that was washing his kit has apologized. He was coerced to do that. I think you could invite him to tell you exactly what transpired. He did not only have one kit. A lot of things were done to try to give Nigeria a bad image. And it's sad that you have athletes that should be patriotic being used to actually run down the image of the country. So about the kids um, that you saw in the viral video, um, the former AFN board, they, they went to court before the Olympics. Those things were in court. So we, as a house, cannot go into a matter that they've already put in court. Well, just before we go, earlier on you talked about sports as business. I don't think many people will argue with that. And you talked about the role of the private sector. Yes, we've seen the private sector playing a very important role in that sector. But are you by any chance saying that government, you know, is uh, too overbearing uh, at the moment in terms of involvement in sports and that the field should just be left to the private sector? No, I don't, I'm not saying that government needs to be involved. The federations need to be more transparent and accountable. If they are transparent enough, I'm sure the private sector will key in because no businessman wants to put their funds into a federation. They don't know the audited accounts and how they manage those funds. It's more of being transparent so that the private sector will have trust in putting funds into those federations. We have a situation where a lot of federations have constitutions that are um, very funny, not very clear. That's what is happening with the MBBF now. We have two contradicting constitutions that is causing the main problem in the MBBF right now. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Lumedio Shaba, for joining us this morning on The Morning Show.